I don't know about you, but sometimes I like a good straight line. I'm sure you've been there before. You're walking up to the grocery store with a specific list of four things. Time is of the essence. And as you approach those automatic doors, you have mentally mapped out your exact route. Okay, maybe that's just me. But probably not though, right? <laughs> There's also another straight line, straight route, that we are always striving for in our engineering lives. That line from prototyping to real-world, on-the-shelf applications. And folks, that's exactly what we're talking about today. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Carlos Rodriguez from Arduino, Chris Siemenson from Renaissance, and I explore how the Arduino Nano R4 solution can help you streamline your next embedded design process. We also explore the benefits of the RA4M1 microcontroller at the heart of this solution and how you can get started using the Arduino Nano R4 for your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic. Hi, Carlos. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks. I'm really glad to be here. Okay, so we're talking all about the Arduino Nano R4 today. So first, Carlos, tell me about the motivation to create this solution. So after we launched the Uno R4 family, we introduced a new architecture, right, based on the RE4M1 from Renesas. And we were actually really excited on the adoption from the members of the community. And we pay a lot of attention to different channels the community used to communicate. And we saw some interest there. We also started getting some interest from our sales network. And it was a natural move, right? Like we wanted to bring the power of the Area M1 from Renaissance into a smaller package to enable people to become way more creative. That was the main motivation. It came from listening to our user base and to expand the possibilities that this microcontroller has. Fantastic. Okay, so Carlos, what kind of specific benefits are we talking about with the Nano R4? One of the core benefits of this product is the idea that you can start prototyping with the Uno R4, particularly with the Minima, right? Which is like the bourbon version of the Uno R4 family. And then easily, without changing your code, you can move to a production, right? So you shrink the footprint. It can be embedded inside your project without changing the firmware that you wrote for it. So this is a super powerful feature that will speed up people going from prototyping to mass production. That's the first one, and in our opinion, is one of the most powerful. The other one is the one I just mentioned is we're saving a space, right? Like the Nano family has a really small footprint that will help people to create smaller devices, embed the Nano, inside their products. We also added some extra features that the microcontroller allow us, right? So for instance, we're adding an extra quick connector that is, is present in the Uno R4 Wi-Fi. We have included a new family of products, which are the Modulinos. So people right now with little effort can create really complex projects just using the quick connector. You just create a daisy chain of Modulinos and you have a fully functional project in no time. Also, there is the, obviously, the RGB LED. People will have the possibility to have extra feedback for debugging. And one element that seems for many people kind of be that important, but I think for the production, for those interested in moving to from prototyping to production, is really relevant, which is the certification compliant. We want people who created prototypes with the Uno R4 to easily move to production and particularly with the certifications on top of that. So we are certifying the Nano R4 with the same certifications that the Uno R4 has. 
Can we also dig into the technical aspects of this solution a little bit? Sure. As I mentioned before, this board is based on the RA Form 1 from Renasas. It's a super powerful microcontroller. The first feature that I would like to highlight is the operating voltage at 5 volts for retrocompatibility with previous nano boards like the AVR family. This board has the same pinout as any other nano board, so it will be easier for users of previous nano boards which maybe have created their own designs. They can easily swap the boards and integrate the, the nano R4. And here to highlight what is also a feature that comes as part of the microcontroller is the fact that it supports CAN. It has a digital to analog converter and an operational amplifier. And on top of that, in this design, we added the VRTC or VVAT so people can connect an external battery to keep the RTC running. The USB-C connector, even if it seems like a, an obvious addition, is actually quite relevant for simplifying and programming process. And the quick connector, we're actually really excited to add the quick connector to this product. Overall, we consider that this is a board that is packed with features. It can serve many, many users. Fantastic. Okay, so Carlos, you mentioned before that this solution helps streamline the path to production. Can you talk about that a bit more? Yeah, absolutely. So when we released the Uno R4 family, we wanted to bring this new technology to the hands of many. But we are aware that the Uno form factor is not the smallest in our portfolio. And when we saw the adoption of this new architecture, that's where the Nano R4 came to seem more relevant, right? So we want to place the Nano R4 as the system of module answer for the Uno R4 family. So the idea is that you can easily create your prototypes using jumpers and breadboards, using the Uno R4, and then when you want to move to mass production, you design your PCB, taking into account the footprint of the Nano R4, and with the variant without headers, you can use the castellated pins and just add it there to your design. So you have the power section and the microcontroller all in one. You just need to focus on what is your application, what do you want to do on top of the already powerful Nano R4. That's what we want to bring. We want to bridge the prototyping opportunities in the Uno R4, how comfortable it is to prototype in there, and then easily move to production in your custom PCB. All right. So what kind of supporting assets does Arduino offer for the Nano R4? Documentation and support in, for Arduino products is a really important part of our development, not only on the technical part, but it enriches the experience of the user. So those who are interested can go to our documentation site. There you will find different tutorials. You will find all the certification documentation also added there. On top of that, our forum is a place that we monitor constantly and is actually a place where we engage in conversations with members of the community. Our technical support team is also available for any question and any issue that you can face. And we have also created the Help Center, which is this self-service platform where you can find multiple articles that can help you. If you find a, a roadblock, you can go there and easily find the solution. All right. So, Carlos, I would imagine that there are quite a few different applications that this solution would be a good fit for. Absolutely. We consider that there is an important place of the Nano R4 inside the industry. So the fact that the Nano R4, and in particular the microcontroller, the RA4 m one from Renesas, is that it supports CAM protocol. So with a really small footprint, you can start communicating with different systems that work over CAN. And on top of that, the fact that this is a 32 bits architecture with an operational amplifier, it could be interesting for 
some motion control systems. For instance, we have prepared this tutorial on how to do anomaly detection using the Nanoar 4 and running an AI on edge model inside. In the industry, we see tons of potential applications. For home appliances, we also see a place for makers and people who like to kind of hack or disrupt their own environment, right? Part of the maker community, as I mentioned before, the possibility of running models on the edge, like AI edge models inside the Nano R4 with the possibility of adding the modulinos thanks to the quick connector. We think that the home appliances could be an interesting place where people can start hacking their houses or their living spaces. Without a doubt, in the tech education, we see a big possibility. That's the reason why there are two variants of this product. There is one without headers tailored towards a market like those who want to create their own PCB and they want to embed the Nanoar 4 in the design, but there is another variant with headers. So it's a breadboard friendly. So in education, in case you want to use these small boards, use breadboards and jumpers, there is also this possibility. So we see a lot of potential in the Nanoar 4 obviously building on top of the shoulders of the giant who is the Uno R4 family. Carlos, what kind of cool projects have you seen this solution being used for? We have seen a really interesting adoption from members of the community. We launched the Nano R4 maybe a month and a half ago or something like this. And we have seen people already experimenting my personal favorite is the, this project from Arduino, who created this transparent screen, high-tech look clock. I'm always looking for these kind of projects. I love the creativity of the Arduino community. And we're honestly looking forward for more. I mean, we see every day on YouTube new projects coming, and we're super excited to see what people will create. Fantastic. Me too. All right. So let's bring in Christopher and talk more about the Renaissance RA4M1 microcontroller. So the RA4M1 fits in our RA series of microcontrollers. Renesis has a wide variety of offerings from the RL78, which is our low power scalability line to the RX for on our power efficiency on our proprietary core to our RA, which is fits into the ARM ecosystem. And the RA4M1 fits firmly and is our very robust product offering inside of that particular brand offering. Fantastic. So, Chris, what kind of benefits does the RA4M1 microcontroller bring to the table? So the RA4M1 fits right in between where you're getting data and where data is getting sent to. And so it really is scalability and utility is the name of the game for this microcontroller. It offers a wide variety of connectivity and integrated HMI features in addition to security features. So the focus of this microcontroller is to try to pull as many of the parts around the MCU into the microcontroller as possible to make it easy on system integrators. And it really highlights HMI, integrated security, and a modest analog featuring all tied together to be able to kind of communicate that out to the world. And the great thing about the RA series is that it's made with the Renesis FSP, which is our flexible software package. And that keeps any code you create for this as portable as possible across the entirety of the RA family of microcontrollers. The RA4 series it bridges the need for a reasonable low power and demand and for connectivity and performance. So it, what it really does is it kind of acts as an in-between between our low, our low offerings, so the uh, RA0, and then our high-end offerings, which is kind of our RA8. So these uh, microcontrollers can deliver up to 100 megahertz. The RA4 M1 specifically delivers up to 48 megahertz with 256K of flash. And it offers a wide set of peripherals, including USB, CAN, ADC, capacitive touch, a segment seven controller, and integrated security IP integration. And it's really suitable for our, or targeted for our IoT, like edge devices that sit between different nodes, industrial equipment, home appliances, office equipment, healthcare, and meters. Chris, what kind of applications and markets would the RAM1 microcontroller be a good fit for? 
it's really whatever you can probably fit it into is probably the best market for it, I think is what we'd like to say. Just calling out some very specific ones. So appliances and customer HMI panels. So anything that you need to touch something or work something like a microwave or a washer or a small appliance, it's a fantastic device for that. It could go into simple instrumentation for thermostats, energy utility meters, readout devices with its connectivity. We have industrial tools and office equipment. Anything that again needs a native USB for configuration or for logging, even in like a field service interface for shop floor measurements or for where we need a, a reliable handheld UI meter to like diagnose a printer or a copier or something along those lines. And then um, for IoT devices, since we have something on there that focuses on secure connected endpoints and uh, for smart factory gear. So Chris, can you also talk about the peripherals offered in this solution? Yeah, we have a robust lineup of peripherals. We have two uh, HMI and security things that I've highlighted there, but really it offers a sampling of our peripherals. So in our HMI interfacing, we have a seven SEDMIC LCD controller paired with a capacitive touch. So that allows you to drive everything from the microcontroller itself. We have a bunch of communication standards. So you see USB 2.0, CAN, I2C, SCI, SPI, and a sound serial interface. On top of that, we have a number of timers and then a number of analog features as well that allow us to kind of integrate the real world into the microcontroller. And then lastly, we have a number of embedded security for AES, a true random number generator key management that allows you to have the security integrated into the device without a second device and allows it to work without taxing our core as well. And the one thing that I'd like to point out is that we have targeted this for product longevity. And so this RA device, along with our others, uh, participate in our longevity life plan. So they target up to 15 years of availability. So Chris, the RA4M1 microcontroller also includes support for a variety of different communication protocols, right? So can you also talk about that a bit? The RA4M1 does have a great use of many different communication protocols from USB, CAN, I2C, SCI, and SVI. Like we talked about before, it's made it sitting at that edge node between whatever you're measuring and wherever you need to get that data to, which is phenomenal. One thing I'd like to call out it has an integrated USB 2.0 full speed with an on-chip transceiver plus an LDO. So it operates as a host device. It has an integrated CAN transceiver into it as well. The sound serial interface allows you to operate in a number of different uh, buzzers, voice, things like that. The real nice thing is that it allows you to offload this throughput through our DMAC and our DTC and our event link controllers. So all of this data throughput can be offloaded by not taxing the core using basically these triggers that allow you to go and bypass the core, which allow you to kind of achieve a higher throughput for such a smaller micro. And lastly, we have this battery charging 1.2 compliance for it. That is a set of compliance that allows you to standardize charger type detection over USB for battery backed endpoints and portable power tool type stuff. So it can negotiate charging without adding any extra hardware. Fantastic. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Chris. Thanks. It was great to talk about it. Thank you so much for joining me, Carlos. It was a pleasure. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.